So as a default option, I'll choose number of instances as one. And you also see the virtual machine size as the five sizes that you can choose from. So what do you mean by small? What do you mean by medium? And so on. So forth. For this, let me take you quickly to uh, Windows Azure Rules size to a page which will help me to tell you, you know, what are the sizes of these rules. So Microsoft gives you five pre-configured virtual machines. If you see here, when I choose small, I get one CPU core machine, I get 1.75 GB RAM and the disk space to store your data. In a similar way, if I choose medium as a virtual machine size, I get two CPU machine, I get 3.0 GB RAM and almost 500 GB of this space to store the data. So for this demo, I'll choose the default option which is small. So I go up back to my IDE, I choose small as the virtual machine, I say OK and then if you want to add more worker roles, more applications, so you may want to go ahead and add from here as well. Similarly, if you want that you should have a remote debugging support because this this will be deployed on the cloud. You may wish that you have a remote debugging support for your application. So you can go ahead enable this as well. Second thing that you see here as options is endpoints. What are the endpoints which will be which will be used to expose your applications? So if you see this, port number 80 is what your application will be exposed on when it is on the public cloud using protocol HTTP. So your request, your input request to your JSP page can come via HTTP on port number 80. When you are doing testing, it will be on port number 8080. So these endpoints are very important to configure so that your application is exposed on a particular port using a particular protocol. So these are some options which you need to check out before you go ahead and configure your Windows uh, Azure project of Java. So what I have right now with me is the Windows Azure demo project. But right now I don't have that linked to my Azure demo application which has a JSP file. So what, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to export the WAR file. I'm going to export the WAR file which has my JSP page. My JSP page is here. This JSP content is what I have. So I'm going to export this as a WAR file with some name. I'm going to put it on my desktop for locating it faster. And then this goes ahead and creates a WAR file the, which I require. Next job is to bring this WAR file into my Azure demo project. So what I do is under worker roles, under app root, the ID default creates some WAR file. I'll just go away with that WAR file and add the WAR file which I have created under app root. So now if you see whatever WAR file that we had created for Windows, for the Azure demo, that WAR file is now is being added into the worker role project of your Azure demo project. So this is the WAR file which will get hosted on the cloud. As I said, just hosting the WAR file will not help because by default your Microsoft Cloud will not have the JDK required JDK. It will also not have the required server to execute this. So in the deployment, in the deployment you will have to add the JDK and you, you also have to add the application server. So what you will have to do is once you download your JDK, you will have to zip the JDK and ensure that uh, all your Java applications are, uh, all your Java related files uh, of your JDK are zipped into a folder uh, JDK.zip. So in this zip, you, you need to make sure that the zip has a folder called as JDK and all the files of the JDK are inside that partition. This is how the zip looks like. Just to repeat this, 
I have a file called JDK.zip. JDK.zip has a folder called JDK and all the related JDK files are under this folder. This is the structure that you should maintain for creating the JDK zip. Now this JDK zip I need to go ahead and also add into the app root. So I'm adding JDK. Similarly, Windows Azure will not have support for uh, default support for Tomcat. Similarly, I go ahead and zip the Tomcat folder. So all these related Tomcat files are zipped into in paucity of time. I've already zipped it into Tomcat 7.zip and the same zip I'm going to add it into the app root folder. So this completes my basic stuff of adding the war file which has my JSP application, adding the Tomcat 7.zip which has the Tomcat server and JDK which is the backbone of all these things. Now once you do this, once you do this, the next thing is you have to configure the startup. Once the worker role will start, what is the next step you do? So the worker role, you have to give commands to the worker role as to what things should be started when the worker role is starting. Pretty obviously, when the worker role starts, you will have to start the Tomcat server, deploy your war file in the Tomcat server and make it available to people on the port that you had configured as an input endpoint. So I already have the required files with me, but now this thing I have to ex modify or customize the startup command. So when you create a Azure project, you get some samples. Depending upon which server you use, if you're using Jetty, if you're using JBoss, if you're using Glassfish or Apache Tomcat, you by default get some samples which are provided as a part of plugin. So I'm going to use Tomcat. I'm going to open the sample, copy the complete text from the sample file, and go ahead and open the startup.bat. I go ahead, open it, and replace the content of the startup.command batch file with the contents which are available to me in the Apache Tomcat. Important changes that you have to do here is what is the Apache Tomcat directory name. As I told you, I'm using version 7.0.25. So this is one change which I have to do. Second change which is important for me is I'm using some non-default name for the war file. I deliberately did that so that I can explain you during the demo. So the name of the war file is azure demo.war file. So this is something which I need to go ahead and change. So azure demo dot war is what I need to be careful upon while changing. So this completes my startup script. So I'm almost done to show and deploy the application.